Well, honey, all in all, it was a pretty good evening, wasn't it? It was a great speech. Oh, that roast beef was good, wasn't it? Who would have thought I had certain potatoes with the roast beef? What was that sauce, that special sauce had in it? That's gravy. It? Gravy. <laughs> but it was beef gravy, and they, they cooked it. It was spiced. It was so well. Shut up, Tim. Oh. How could you blow up my driver's license picture? How could you do that? Well, it was better looking than your passport photo. <laughs> well, there are only two choices here. Uh, Tim, there's tons of pictures of me in this house. Well, I didn't have time. Why not? Oh, because Marie sprang this on me at the last minute. The last minute? The very last minute. And if she'd give me some time, I would have picked out a perfect picture. Oh, oh. So you're just saying this was all Marie's fault? Well, I wouldn't want to point the finger at her. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even mention it to her. <laughs> who, are you, who are you calling? Time. Oh, I got the time. It's 9.35. Hello, Marie. Oh, boy. <laughs> How much time did you give Tim to get that picture? Three weeks, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Marie. Bye. Hey, how's Marie? <laughs> Three weeks. You said the last minute. Who are you gonna believe? <laughs> my, my guess would be Marie. <laughs> Thank you for ruining one of the most important nights of my life. Oh, didn't ruin it. You raised all the money. People love your speech. Oh, come on. There's a bright spot here. Everybody's laughing so hard at the picture. They didn't see that skaggy dress you have on. <laughs> Hey, why don't I just sleep on the couch? Tim? Uh, I know what you're gonna say. I've already decided I'm not gonna say another word about the oil light. You made a mistake, anybody can make a mistake, and I forgive you. She's drooling, she's drooling, she's drooling down the river. <laughs> you saw the show, huh? Tim, how could you do that? You and I joke about it all the time. We no, laugh about you. You and I joke about it all the time. In the privacy of our bedroom, not on television. We have rocks in your head, don't you think? Let's talk about it. Doesn't think for a minute. Who drove around for two days with the oil light on? Wait. I thought you said you weren't going to bring up the oil light. With all those rocks in my head, sometimes I don't know what I'm saying. Look, my mistake involved a car. Your mistake involved a human being, me. There's a big difference here. Of course, I don't expect you to understand that since you're completely insensitive. Insensitive? You didn't even think about how I would feel. Well, I didn't tell him everything. <laughs> everything? You know, when you roll on your side, you gurgle. <laughs> what, are you saving that for the Christmas special? No. <laughs> Okay, Tim. What did you buy and how little do we need it? It's no big deal. Bud offered me some Pistons tickets, so I bought them. <laughs> how much were they? $50 a piece. Well, that's not so bad. No, it's not. Here we go. <laughs> how many games? All of them. What? All of them. <laughs> how many games is that? Well, more than none in uh, less than 41. 40 games at $50 a piece? That's, that's like $2,000. Per seat. Per seat? <laughs> How many seats did you buy? One. And the one next to it. The two seats? That's, that's $4,000. Unless they get in the playoffs, because for some reason, playoff tickets are more money than regular seats. More? That is ridiculous. I I'm going to send them a letter. And send it from a new address. Let's not even worry about the playoffs. It's too far away, and I don't need to, They'll never make it. What am I talking about? They're a lousy team this year. You spent $4,000 on a lousy team? Come on, let me explain something to you about basketball. Right, right. You cannot get season tickets like this with a good team. You gotta ride out the bad years hoping for a good one. That's what you said 17 years ago when I married you, and I'm still waiting for a good one. <laughs>
<laughs> I can't believe that you made a decision like this without discussing it with me first. Well, Bud needed an answer right away. And, and you, you buy a lot of stuff without asking me. Like what? This couch? <laughs> How can you compare the two? I bought the couch because we need a place to sit. That's why I bought the tickets. I want to go to the game. I need a place to sit. <laughs> This money is supposed to be for education. For, for, for my graduate school, the kids' college funds. I'm not gonna dip in the college fund. We'll, we'll, we'll get the money someplace else. Where? Well, you know, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't mind giving up that vacation we had planned. Oh, that's big of you. You didn't care about going to New York anyway. We don't have to now, because the New York Knicks are coming to town. <laughs> and the Washington Bulls, the Boston Celtics, the entire Eastern Seaboard will be right here in the Motor City. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Then put the money back in the bank account. Did I explain that from where these seats are, you can actually reach out and touch the, the, the mascot, sir, uh, slam a lot? <laughs> Hi. Why is Ian's truck still out there? You said he was gone. Where is he? Ian's truck broke down, and I gave him a ride home. <laughs> look at this. These beveled edges, you can't even see a seam. This guy's work is great. Can you imagine what this will look like tomorrow? Pretty much the same. <laughs> Why do you say something like that? I fired in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for a moment there, I thought you said you fired my granite guy. I did. When I gave him a lift home, he came on to me. You fired the granite guy? <laughs> Did you hear what I said? He came on to me. What did he say? He had a nice outfit or something? He kissed me. <laughs> what, what did you do? I, I pushed him away. Well, you should have fired him. I did fire him. You fired the granite guy? <laughs> what? He's here one day and hitting on my wife? What is that about? I know. I know. I should have told you the whole story the minute that Ian walked in the door. The whole story? You and Ian have a, have a story? Well, you remember when I told you that a guy at the Y asked me out on a date? Ian was the guy that didn't know you were married? Yeah. Well, why didn't you tell me this? Because I thought you'd get jealous and it would make you crazy. What did it make you, Jill? Now, come on, you're getting paranoid. Am I? <laughs> I had no idea that this was going to turn out this way. All I wanted was for you not to fire another guy and for us to get our kitchen finished. Did you? <laughs> when you secretly have the hots for the granite man. I don't have the hots for any man. Mm. <laughs> Look, you know what I mean. Well, you, you probably have plenty of secrets from me. No, I don't. You always talk about trust in this marriage. You do something like this and you break it. I feel terrible. I'm really sorry. Are you? <laughs> or maybe inside you're jumping for joy, huh? Huh? Maybe you and Ian are just spinning a web of twisted little lies. And I'm just your prawn. <laughs> Tim, a, a prawn is a big shrimp. Right. You can't play chess with a crustacean. Thief? That's what he is. He is not rotten. He has never done anything even remotely like this. You didn't have to scream. You scared him after death. Well, maybe that's good. Next time he thinks about stealing something, he's going to think twice about it. I hate when you do this. The kids do something, you overreact. No, you underreact. I do not underreact. You go overboard. When you go underboard. There's no such word as underboard. And since when are you the only one that makes decisions around here? I thought that we were in this parenting thing together. Well, somebody had to deal out the punishment, and it certainly wasn't going to be you. Oh, I see. I see. So you deal out the punishment, and then I'm the one who has to stay home and enforce it. You want to work together? That's your part. <laughs> that is one of the stupidest things you've ever said. So what am I supposed to do? Quit work, stay home, and enforce his grounding? No, I just want you to think about what you say before you say it. And if it's not the right thing to say, then don't say it at all. Could, could you say that again? 